Hey, my name's Leisha, and I'm here to talk to you about books. The books I read in March, as well as uh, try and figure out lighting. Yo! This is going to be my March wrap-up, where I talk about the, all of the books that I read in the month of March this year, 2020. Like the majority of the world, I am finding myself in a unique position where I can explore the hobbies that I had been meaning to start for years because now I all of a sudden have all the time in the world. So what I'm going to do today is talk about the seven and a half books that I have read in the month of March. I will give a uh, brief synopsis of the book, a mini uh, spoiler-free synopsis of the book, a mini review, and my grade. And then hopefully if anybody watches this video, you can see what I thought about some books and maybe check them out for yourselves. Uh, full disclaimer, I did a audit of the books I had read in the month of March, and they are pretty much all about murder. So, yeah. Ya girl a freak. The first book I read in the month of March is called Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls by Alyssa Nutting. This is a short story collection of about 17 contemporary fiction short stories that are all surrounding women and girls doing strange jobs. So it covers like a range of like a woman who is about to be turned into soup for food, or a zookeeper who steals a panda from the zoo, or a space ship cargo delivery woman who is trying to steal her mother from like a cryogenic prison or a porn star in space and I feel that the like underlying theme tying them all together is autonomy over women's bodies and people trying to take that from them so it's got a bit of like a feminist, dark, satire undercurrent to it. Some of the stories were really funny. Some of the stories were kind of forgettable of the 17. I feel like there's only about six or seven that I can remember pretty well. They, it was good. It was short. I read the whole book on a ferry boat ride. So that was nice. It was a good contemporary collection if that's something that you are interested in. I gave it three stars. The second book I read in the month of March is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This is a short uh, South Korean literary fiction story. It is told in three parts all surrounding a woman named Yong Hee. And Yong Hee and so each of the three parts is all about Yang He, but it's told from three different perspectives of people around her. So the first part is Yang He's husband, the second part is her brother-in-law, and then the third part is her sister. So the premise is uh, Yang He one day has a dream that's really violent, and she decides out of this dream, after having this dream, that she is going to now become a vegetarian. That's just a choice that she made and something that she wanted to do. And everybody around her has such a problem with this. So her husband, in the first part, her husband is trying to make her do what he wants her to do. It's very aggressive and violent and upsetting. And the second part is from the point of view of her uh, brother-in-law and that one's all weird and sexy and there's like some flower sex going on in that one. It's a very surreal, strange plot. I loved it. Um, it leaves you, it, you're, you're asking a lot of questions as it goes along. It's got a very like David Lynch vibe to it. I, um... 
loved it. I uh, highly recommend it. I gave it uh, four and a half stars. The third book I read in the month of March is called The Murders of Molly Southbourne by Tay Thompson. I took this out of my library. This was a horror science fiction story about a woman named Molly Southbourne and it's one of those stories where it kind of starts at the end and it's her telling her life to someone else about how she got to here and the general premise is that when Molly bleeds her blood if it isn't immediately destroyed turns into a clone of her that is its only directive is to kill Molly. So Molly, uh, of course, is now dealing with clones that are trying to kill her and she's got to kill them first. Um, it explores like how complicated this gets when Molly like goes through puberty and then starts to menstruate. Like you can imagine that that would be complicated. Uh, so yeah, it was really fun. It was really gory. I kind of thought when I went into it that it was going to be YA, but it was most definitely not. I recommend it. It was a fun, quick, strange, bloody, murdery little book. The fourth book I read in the month of March is called Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enrique. This is another short story collection. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have been on a real short story collection kick this month. And always, I love short stories. So this one is, uh, I don't know if I said, it's by um, Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enrique. It is a contemporary horror collection all set in contemporary Argentina. It was uh, re recently, it was re originally written in Spanish and recently translated to English in I think 2017-2018. And it's all, they're not connected short stories, but they're all in in the country of Argentina and it, it's a kind of mix of supernatural horror and real world like political horror and it's all meant to like set the tone of what's happening in contemporary Argentina. There were a couple of standout stories that were just like ooh, real heavy, hard, gritty, gruesome and I feel like a lot of the horror elements even though there was some supernatural in it, like a lot of the horror elements came from just like lived experience in that country. Uh, the first story is called like the bloody boy or the the dead boy or something, or it was called the dirty kid. And this was like a woman living in the city and she's there's a homeless family that live outside and she's always just kind of been aware of them and known of them and then one day she comes home and the kid who was like maybe only 10 had been like decapitated by someone in the night and his body was on the street so she's trying to navigate the trauma of that. Um, there was another one called The Intoxicated Years where it covers like three or four years in the 90s where there was a government enforced uh, blackout so it's like these three or four teenagers who are like trying to get up to whatever they can during that time and it just gets darker and darker and more violent and then of course there's murder there's murder involved in that one as well yeah so it was all um the whole book was going over and showing you experiences that i've never lived but were that were like difficult and hard and good it was i'm glad i'm glad that i read it though I related to some stories more than others and some of them kind of started to feel a little samey in the end, but it was good. Uh, I gave it three out of five stars. The fifth book I read in the month of March is Little Paranoias by Sonara Taylor. This is a so another short story collection. There's about 20 stories in this tiny tiny little volume so they were like super short short they were like vignette style uh short stories I I know this is not like a 
majority opinion, but I love like super short fiction. There were some stories in here that were only like a page and a half long and they kind of felt like uh, just like napkin ideas that she had scrawled out and then put into the collection. So a lot of them were just like ideas without really any sort of fully developed plot or development or resolution but I love that like the title was called Little Paranoia so it was all just like little ideas that kind of get under your skin and there was a lot of little like twists of um what you thought was going to happen but they were really short like there was um one called like the note on the door that was about a woman who sees a note on someone's window and she goes to uh and it says help me I need help or something like that and then she goes into the house and you're like oh is there gonna be a murder um there it definitely is but who who's the actual murder here uh. um a lot of them were really like current and kind of felt like black mirror-y there was one where it was like two bffs who were murderers together and they have a podcast where they use their like true crime podcast audience to help them do additional murders there was one the longest book the longest story in the collection was called seed and that one like was really cool like i would want to see a movie of that one it was about like pl plants that had taken over the world and i know that's not like an original plot but it was about this woman who's like living in the woods and she's thinking back on the time before the plants took over and like the way that plants take over they either like kill a person from the inside or like turn a person into a plant so she's just kind of trying to survive in the woods and there's like another man who's also in the woods who's trying to survive and it's like really erotic as well um yeah it was a good one I enjoyed that there was one story in here though that I really didn't like it was called cranberry and it was about body dysmorphia and bulimia and it was just a lot and it made me really really uncomfortable so trigger warnings for that one the rest were dope though i gave this four or five stars the sixth book that i read in the month of march was called the knitting circle Rapist Annihilation Squad by Derek Jensen and Stephanie McMillan. This is a comedy satire. I took this book out of the library. The only reason why I took it out was because of the name. I saw it sitting there on the shelf and was like, Ooh, what? I gotta read that. I went into this book expecting to get exactly what the title told me. And I did. I did get exactly what the title told me, but spoiler, I hated it. I hated this book so much. So I f the idea behind this book was it was basically a fictional story that's kind of like relating to or like satirizing the like scum manifesto from the 60s. Um, the Scum Manifesto was like Valerie Solanos who wrote this about the killing of men, like the society of cutting up men or something like that. And she did an assassination attempt on Andy Warhol, I believe. Anyways, this is a kind of fictionalized satire of that where women in a knitting club go around and murder rapists and somewhere in my head I still love that idea I still love it I still love the concept of it I just hated the actual execution of this book it starts with like a hard open of like a rape attempt scene that was awful and violent and horrible and then this woman like murders the rapist with a knitting needle which is great but I felt like the whole book kind of like made light of the concept of rape and just kind of like threw it in there. It was really graphic and it was like trivializing it. Like a lot of this was like I could tell the authors were like making jokes and trying to make these jokes really funny, but they weren't funny. And then they kept saying them over and over again as if that was going to at some point make them funny, but it didn't. Um, 
when I was about three quarters of the way through this book, I just like wanted it to be over. So I was kind of like skimming to the end to like get it over. And I don't really feel like I missed anything by having done that. So one star. And this book is trash. The seventh book I read in the month of March is called My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a domestic thriller from 2019. I believe it was a debut release. And also took this out of my library. I um, This month I took about eight books out of the library, this being one of them. And the day after I took them all out, my, like, my local library shut down along with all many, many others due to COVID-19. So this was just, this came for me when I needed it. Like I just needed something that was not gonna have me think too hard, that wasn't gonna have me just trying to sink into something super difficult, that was just gonna take my mind off the world. And what better way to take your mind off the world than with a husband and wife tag team murder couple. I mean, that's just, that's just perfect. So, like I said, this book is from the point of view of an unnamed husband, which I actually didn't realize until the end of the book that he never had a name. Um, but that's pretty, that's pretty rad. It was giving me like flea bag vibes. So this husband, him and his wife uh, have been married for at least 15 years. They have two teenage sons, or two teenage kids, sorry, one girl, one boy. And they are totally into murder. They, um... The way they tag team it is the husband uh, goes and finds these women, he stalks them, he hunts them down, he seduces them, he brings them home, and then his wife murders them. So this is their thing, this is their kink, this is what they do. And it's kind of following like the family drama of them trying to keep this secret from the police, from their children. And then they also have secrets within their marriage between each other. So there isn't like an earth shattering twist in this book. This is definitely isn't like a twist thriller. You kind of know what's going on the whole book. But it was so well developed. Like I just loved everything around it. I loved all the characters. Well, my, I, didn't, I didn't love the characters. They were murderers. Let's just, let's just get that. Let's just get that out, out, of, out of the way. They were murderers. They weren't great. They were bad, bad people. But I liked following them. I liked being around them. I liked seeing what they were going to do. I liked, I mean, when there was a risk, when there were risks, it was like, oh, it was the risk of a murderer getting caught. So I'm cool with that too. It was just a good time. Um, the ending was dumb as hell. Like I hated the end, but the end, but like that just kind of took it from like a five star to a four star. So it was worth it. It's worth your time. Or three. I liked it. My lovely wife, Samantha Downey. Four stars. Finally, book eight is what I am currently reading. And this is called Ken. Sorry, it's not called Ken. Finally, the book that I am currently reading is called Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall. I'm only about 50 pages into this, so I don't have a review, but maybe I will at some point. I mean, I will. I will, I will finish this and I will rate it on Goodreads. But this is a horror book from the 70s. Ken, uh, Ken Greenhall uh, wrote a whole bunch of fiction in the 70s and 80s. He lived, wrote, died without really having seen a lot of success from his books. And then uh, a couple years ago, a horror author, Grady Hendrix, wrote a book called Paperbacks from Hell, where he kind of dives into all of the like culty horror paperback fiction from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And he kind of brings a lot of these like hidden and forgotten gems back into the light. So this is like a reprint of this book that had been out of print for a really long time. Uh, this is about a 14-year-old girl named Elizabeth who is possibly possessed or also possibly a witch. And she gives me strong Lily vibes. She is way too mature for a 14 year old and like way too sexual for a 14 year old. 
and she's being visited by a witch in her mirror named Francis, and together they are up to no good. They're planning some stuff, and Elizabeth is trying to seduce or is seducing her uncle James, which is really gross. Um, there's a lot of this book is like got some really cool like atmosphere. It's ominous. It's weird. It's gross. I'm really liking it despite the questionable subject matter. I this is my second book by Ken Greenhall. Uh, last two months ago, I read another book of his called Hellhound, and Hellhound is about a sentient dog that is a sociopath and a murderer, and I loved it. I loved Hellhound. Uh, the dog's name is ba Baxter. He's a bad boy. I loved it, so I thought I would give Elizabeth a go, and I am also very much enjoying it. So yay, yay Ken. Yay Ken Greenhall. So those are the seven and a half books that I read in the month of March. So from here, I am going to attempt to learn how to edit these videos and put them onto YouTube. So still TBD if these videos actually make it in, or this video actually makes it into the world. And if you enjoyed this, please let me know. I need the human contact and interaction. If you hated it, also, please let me know. I This is my first attempt at doing anything like this, so it would be good to get some of that feedback. So, until, until next time, bye-bye!